And there's two players now sharing the lead. Well, I'm not sharing, Johnny. This programme is brought to you by Vitality, sharing a love of the action. Oh, I am. Right. Ahead of the Six Nations, the official wellness partner of Scottish rugby, Vitality, brings exclusive access and insight from two of the most respected and well-renowned fly halves ever to play the game. In this special content series which will run across the Six Nations, we hear from Vitality Ambassador Johnny Wilkinson and Scottish rugby head coach Gregor Townsend about their memories from playing against each other, how they've adapted to life after rugby and how they've coped during the pandemic. So, it's an anniversary, 150 years of the Calcutta Cup, apparently. They're the notes that I've been given. Uh, fierce rivalry over the years. Johnny, whenever I, I, I played in England, I played at Saracens, and people couldn't get over why, for Scotland, it was such a big game, but they obviously didn't know history. But any game against England is always a big game, but for Scotland, it's the biggest. It always has been, it always will be. Um, did you feel that rivalry when, when you were a player playing for England against Scotland? Yeah, I did. I'd, I'd say, yeah. Um, especially when we went up to, to Murrayfields. Um, definitely you could feel just that there was a, there was a real sense of um, togetherness and cohesion about, you know, the, the, just the, the general public, the, the, the nearby, the, the towns. Do you know what I mean? It just felt like everything was gearing up for the game. You know, it's almost like it, it comes alive when you get towards the stadium on on match day where I've always felt those two or three days leading in especially when we went up to Edinburgh quite early you know you could sense geez you know it's almost like I feel like the game's today just a Thursday and I'm like we just finished training you're almost like I feel like the energy's telling me we're, we're on um, and there's a real sense of that you yeah, know that kind of in, you know like I said just real intensity and and you know it, it, there's a different feel about it. I think every game had a different feel about it just in the warm-up and just you know, when you're jogging around the field at the beginning passing the ball there's a it's almost like you can put yourself in that space and just and feel that energy and you immediately go, yeah, this is this is Murrayfield. Well, Johnny, in 2007, when you'd been out injured for a while, you came back into the team, you scored a try in the corner. You must have been that far in touch that you were in the car park <laughs> and you got made of the match. <laughs> He's had an outstanding oh! game. Can he go on his own? Looks inside for Johnny Wilkinson. Johnny Wilkinson and scores! Oh, it's the perfect fairy tale for Wilkinson, except... Except it hasn't been awarded. Do you know what? You look at my face on that. When the try is given, I'm on my way back to halfway. I'm on my way back to halfway, being like, or oh, not halfway, so I'm on my way back to wherever it was, to the line out, whatever it is, thinking, like, come on, guys, get over here. We need to get ready for this. And the referee, yeah, they gave it. And I thought, right. I cannot believe they gave that. <laughs> that. I drew against England once and should have won. And I think you played in that game as well. You might remember me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, do. I, do. I do remember the draw. He does. I know. Uh, Gregor, you, you've got the benefit of having been a player uh, and also been a coach uh, involved in these, like for me, with an English accent, but born and bred in the Northern Hebrides of Coventry. Um, I loved playing in these matches. What's it like to coach and, and your memories as a coach or a player? Your, your best memory? In 2000, so my only time I'll be England as a player in 2000, um, we were coming up the back of four straight defeats. We'd welcomed Italy into the Six Nations by losing out um, to Italy. And the year before, we'd won the championship. We'd won the, the Five Nations. And it was a tremendous uh, achievement and um, great rugby played. So skip forward a year. We lose four out of four games. Terrible. Um, media on the backs, rightly. We hadn't played well at all. And then we're going to beat England in the sleet and snow uh, that day at Murrayfield. And... That week, the outpouring of joy and emotion, you hear it from colleagues um, and people and friends. I reckon people felt better that year <laughs> the year before we would be everyone else bar England and when that had the trophy. And that's how much it means. And when you can combine it with, I don't know, a, a great occasion and atmosphere and, and great rugby, then it's ultimate for a Scotland rugby fan. And I do, I do believe, so I just last thing on this, that 1990 had such a big um, impact for us as Scottish rugby supporters. 
like that that win against a, a superb English side ended up being the Grand Slam win as well. That that became a defining moment in our history. So I think that's when the game even grew in more importance. Um, it's been 150 years, and I'm sure there's been there's been great rivalries over the years, but 1990 just meant that this game was always going to be the biggest one for us every year. That was the World Cup final for them Scotland players because none of them had to work since, Johnny. That's it, mate. They've all <laughs> dined out on that since then. Um, Gregor, just a, another quick one on the, the Calcutta Cup matches. Now, it's almost a bit comical when we talk about it, the, the lads watching Braveheart before the games. And it does happen like it does. And there's some lighthearted mo moments that come out after it. Do you encourage that kind of thing? I know that um, Gregor Kate, um, Greg Laidlaw came out and said that they watched Braveheart before. I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but it seems to always happen and be a thing. Uh, no, a lot less so now. I think um, the day before the game and the day of the game, we want to be as relaxed as possible. And and I've, I've got that, this wrong as a coach on a few occasions where I've built up the emotion or help fuel the emotion um, too high. And I'd even look back at Twickenham two years ago. Some of the things we did in that first 10 minutes um, were not clear thinking. It was emotion, um, partly through my words or my actions um, going into the game, but also the emotion of, of playing an atmosphere like Twickenham where it is supercharged um, and the weight of history is sometimes there. So you, you don't need to build up this game. Um, I think it's about keeping the guys confident and focused on what we believe will, will lead to a win. I didn't go that far back into the archives to see, Gregor, if you and Johnny, Johnny, oh, you yeah. played against Gregor. Did yep. you? And if you if you did, what memories have you got of playing against each other? Gregor would have remembered it, that's for sure, if it happened. I don't know, Johnny, if you did. Yeah, yeah, I didn't remember it well. Um, actually, my uh, I like to call it my first ever full international even though it wasn't my first ever full international was getting beaten 76 nil by Australia. <laughs> so I like to just push that to one side. And my first ever full international, as I like to call it, was in, uh, you know, was in the five nations 99 against Scotland at Twickenham. When we had a pretty good first half and then Gregor um, had a pretty good second half. And, and I remember you running off with an interception as well as a load of other stuff. And we ended up, I think, uh, you know, like it was almost like comeback almost esque of the, uh, the Twickenham game not long ago where uh, I think we snuck it by a point or two at the end, but it was my first international. I remember thinking, Jesus, is this what it's all, yeah, is this what it's going to be like? Just nail biting. But um, yeah. And then um, up in the, the rain in 2000, <laughs> I remember that one as well. So yeah, yeah. Made, we had some, uh, a good couple of clashes, even if we weren't together for that long. Yeah. See, John, Johnny, Johnny talks about the narrow, narrow win. <laughs> I played England 10 times, lost nine out of 10. So Johnny was involved in most of those, <laughs> certainly from 99, well, maybe half of those, 99 yeah. onwards. Um, I, I remember getting tackled by Johnny. Um, it was a hospital pass, I'm blaming Chris Patterson. For the <laughs> Johnny lined me up, his trademark tackle around the chest. Oh, Patterson down the inside, almost got clear. On there, very nicely. So I felt that one. Uh, I, I, I reckon I played against you um, Northampton, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. you came on because I remember Rob Andrew going off injured, and uh, I was up in Newcastle. I'm sure you came yeah. on to be in the centre um, that day, or you or you started at centre. But 98, would that be? Yeah, 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 that'd be right. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah they mostly on the losing side against the, Johnny Jim. We uh, to to be fair, it was. Um, I, the time when we played most of the time, especially in those early days, I was learning an incredible amount. And as as, uh, as Jim was saying, I, <clears throat> intensity, massive fierceness about it. But there was a real rough edged part of me that that just was reactive, hugely reactive. And that was the part that those experiences, like I said, playing against guys like yourself, who I don't know if you had the same journey of going you know, through that smoothing process to becoming so much more effortless and composed in what you're doing. But I was just... I was just like a like a you know like a fuse just ready to explode the whole time you're like a, just anywhere and um it, it's sort of that process of playing against guys like yourself and just seeing a different way was what took me a while to catch on to but there was almost like at some point in my career there was almost like a deep oh god i don't have to do this do you know what i mean this isn't how it needs to be done because it was just non-stop and then suddenly you see this kind of more 
kind of clear way of doing things. And certainly, you know, games like 2000 up in the rain where, um, you know, against you guys, where we were kind of just given a lesson in, in just that kind of understanding what's working, what's not, how to move, how to shift, how to make most of what is happening. And I kind of just found myself in that space of feeling helpless and hopeless. And I kind of realized that at times like that, there were big moments for me to just go, there's a, there's a big opportunity here and I either face it or I, I kind of carry on as I am. And yeah, they were big, big, big changes for me. Well, guys, thank you very much for chatting to us. Gregor, good luck. <laughs> You're becoming Six Nations. As my dad said, it doesn't matter. Just beat England. That doesn't matter about anything else. It obviously does to you. So, and Johnny, I will see you very soon. I'll look forward to being in your company. Yeah, in a brilliant. Couple of weeks. Awesome. Great Thanks time, guys. Good to see you, Johnny. Yeah, and you, Greg. Good luck, mate. Go well. Have a great uh, tournament. Thank you. Don't think you'd be getting many drop goals with your new boots, Johnny. <laughs>